Oh man, there's some fun cars at the auction today. What is this, like a 32 T-Bucket Ford or something? That looks like a 350 Chevy with a probably a 350 turbo transmission. We have a 54 Dodge here. The funny thing is the floorboards aren't here. They're here, perfectly placed for one reason, to cover the rot. And oh man, what do we have here? This looks like a 56 T-Bird, is it? Yes, that is a 1956 Ford Thunderbird. Today could be a bad day for me. Let's go in the auction. Hey, welcome to Flying Wheels. My name is Craig, this is my grandfather, Papa Al. Today is an auction day and it's a fun day because there's some pretty cool cars at the auction today. And I just bought a 19, actually I don't want to say it, I want him to be surprised because I need your help. I know nothing about this car that I just bought and I feel like you're gonna know a lot more than I do. And I kind of bought it on a whim. We're at the auction, it's a dealer only auction, so welcome to the dealer only auction with us. I bought a fun car, there was a T-Bucket here, there was a 56 Dodge or 53 Dodge pickup, and there was another one. I bought it, I hope it runs, it ran through at least, so at least I know it drives. And it's kind of cool and I don't know if I paid way, way too much or I stole the thing, I have no idea. All right, so Papa Al, you used to be an old Ford tech, right? Yes. All right, so I'll give you a hint. What I bought is a Ford. You used to work where? A Wilmington Ford, PS Ford. And Yaz Yaz Ford. Yaz Ford. Yaz Ford is Yastrzemski Ford, Carl Yastrzemski Ford. You also used to work with someone kind of famous. Oh yeah, what was his name? Uh, oh yeah, Jay Leno. Jay Leno, you used to work with Jay Leno. He was a kid. He was a kid, 16. He was a lot boy for Wilmington Ford. Engine plates, moving cars. So the years you worked for Ford were when? Probably 63 to 74. That's perfect, because what I bought today is probably something you have experience with. So let's go check it out. I don't suppose you could guess but can you tell by the keys what it is that I got? B64 and under. Could be Maverick, the Galaxy, Falcon. What makes you say that? Just the design of the key. So right there, you'll see the V for, is that for the Ford V8? Uh, and then you'll see Ford above? I don't know what it's for the V8 or just the Ford emblem. They had that V8 for years. You know what's funny is I had a Ford Taurus recently, a 94 Ford Taurus with two keys and I asked why they had two keys. And a lot of people knew, but a lot of people had no idea why cars had two keys. Oh, one, one for the doors and trunk and one for the ignition. There you go. You bought the Thunderbird? There's our car, a 56 oh T-Bird. Any experience with these things? Uh, a little. Now what you're seeing is pretty much what I'm seeing because I didn't really look through this thing before I bought it, which I don't suggest doing. You should look through the cars before you purchase it. But it went through the lane, I raised my hand, and now I own it. 56 312. It's a, it's a V8. I don't know. Is that what it came with? The 312? I think it's that. I have a question for you. So, before we even dig into it, the gas door is way back here. How do you get to the gas door? This should fall down. You know where it was? Right here. Oh. And then you fill the gas here. And then you have our two keys, one for the ignition, one for the trunk and doors. The round one's for the doors. It doesn't stay in place though. You're supposed to use two hands. The, the cut is always up. The cut is always up. Hey, look at that. Was it the factory radio wheel flares? We, what do you call these things? The skirts? The skirts. The wheel and skirts. The we have the hubcaps, but what are on this? Oh, yeah. came with the spinner wheels and then the original hubcaps. We have our Ford factory radio. This car is actually nicer than I thought. Just by the trunk at least. All right, I'm gonna shut this. Watch your tindas. Fold that back. All right, you do the honors. See if it starts. Do you wanna check the engine out first? Oh yeah. So there's something really cool about this car. Most cars from the 60s and before, how do you open the hoods? In the front. In the front, oh, right? Yeah. But in the T-Bird, way ahead of its time, they went this way. There's a hood lever. And then it goes forward. This was Ford's direct competitor towards the Corvette. And then it transitioned to like that coupe long sedan that was a giant boat. And then it lost all its clout compared to the Corvette. And the Corvette stuck with what they were good at, the coupes and the convertibles. What is this for an engine? 
It looks like the 312. The 312 V8. Look at this, they put the firing order right on the intake. Mm -hmm. Hey, the headers are on upside down. Now, what does it have for a transmission? It should have a Fortomatic here. FX or FMX, the uh, three-speed cast iron automatic. There's something cool about this. Hop in real quick. So talking about being before it's time, this car has a shift lock, which I'm really surprised to see that in the 50s, the shift lock was such a thing, meaning the car won't shift without it being on or touching the brake, right? Okay. While we're talking about the pedals, I want to show everybody something. See way in here? I'm not going to tell anybody. What is that button for way down there? See, you tapped it with your foot, tap it again. Yeah. What does that button do? All well, right, so this me, car, I know. Tell them no, I don't, don't tell anybody. I want them to guess. All right, you're running. Go ahead, you're rolling. Oh, fired right up. And it purrs. It purrs. What's weird is there's no air filter. Why? I wonder if it's because of clearance. That is quiet. Sounds great. I love those white walls. <laughs> you know what else is cool too? So the hard top convertible, the hinges are in the back right here. They're just turn hinges like door handles. The other thing, power seats, because this was a luxury car back then. Look at it, it actually works. It's going up and it's going down and then it goes forward and it goes back. The convertible top is behind the seat. So the convertible top is back here? Wow, look at that. Wow, that's cool. Bunch of cool things about this car, check this out. So the instrument cluster is actually clear glass right here, and it's all numbered right here with the needle climbing on the clear glass. So that's all transparent. Everything is, all the numbers are on the glass here and here. What I don't see is power windows. Oh, wait a minute. Power windows, and they both work. Both power windows work. Anything in the glove box? Do I need the key to open it? Let's try the radio out. Oh, look at this. It's an electronic replacement radio to look like the original radio. This car's really cool. I really, really like this. Pup, it sounds great. Are you adjusting the carburetor manually? Yeah. You're doing it by ear? Yeah. 11 inch windshield. <laughs> What's your first impression so far? It sounds nice. Sounds good. Looks good. In 56, you would have been 16 years old yeah. when this car came out. So you would have been in high yeah. school, like sophomore, junior year. Yeah. We're talking poodle skirts, greaser jackets, slick haircuts, pompadours, all that stuff, right? Oh, yeah. What type of person drove this car? Somebody that had uh, a little bit of money. So this is, yeah, it was, it was an exclusive car. So just out of curiosity, because we're on the topic, in 56, what kind of kid were you? We'll leave that out. Did you wear a leather jacket? I had a leather jacket. Did you lucky smoke strikes. Lucky Strikes? Lucky Strikes. Did you roll them in your sleeve? Rolled them up in my sleeve. What'd you drive? I had a 41 Plymouth boot and a 47 Mercury boot. Did you grease your hair? Oh yeah, definitely. That's what held it <laughs> Did you have a name for your haircut? It was a DA. A DA? What does a DA stand for? I guess, I already know. A duck's bottom. Back. Oh, because of the back? The back? The back. The back. Came on the sides, filled in the back. And then the front would be the Did you ever do this with your finger? Yeah. All right, last question. Did you carry a comb with you? Oh, yeah. Every, you always had a comb with you? Everything, yeah. <laughs> my grandfather just got a call from my uncle just to show what car guys our family is. Uncle Billy, you saw a picture of Papa Al on Facebook. Repeat what you just said to me. It's a 312, not a 292. So it's got the option legion in it. Yeah. Pop, 
You were telling me about the exhaust. Can you explain it again? Oh, the exhaust on these cars runs through the frame and comes out the, the bumper. Comes out right here. The tail. So the if we go underneath it, the you can actually see the exhaust has been replaced and it comes, it's coming out of the frame and follows out through the bumper right there. wiggling between parking. You don't feel any application? Got nothing. Good thing you used to work on old transmissions. Doesn't smell bad? How'd it look? It doesn't, it's dark, but it didn't. Doesn't smell so once again I got burned by the auction and the way it happened was there was no key in the T-Bird if you remember. Well sometimes dealers just don't want their keys in their specialty cars because they don't want people in and out and playing with all the buttons and messing with their cars. So I just assumed that was the reason why. But sneaky dealers take their keys out so I would think that but really it's because they don't want me driving it to know that there's no reverse because then I probably wouldn't have bought it, right? So, they got me. So you me. said it That's only shifts it. twice? Yeah. But it's a three speed, right? Yeah, if you put it in low. So you have a low and then light. you have a second yeah, and then third. You go second and third. So this is 150 mile an hour speedometer. What is, she, I don't want to skid, hang on, I'm gonna hit the brakes. Watch your face yeah. the dash. Why would it have 150 mile an hour speedometer the three speed automatic? What's realistic, do you think? Well, that's all they had back then. Three speed they, automatics? Yeah. Uh, GM had four speed. 60 miles an hour and it's smooth. Just don't expect to back up, I guess. Hopefully it might only be a broken link. What's a broken link? Internal or what? Uh, Just for, the shifter link? No, for the, the whole reverse band, the rear band. Is that internal? Yeah, it's internal, but... Heads uh, up. A lot of it, and you'd have to pull the panda and look and see. Look at how beautiful the garage looks with this car in it. What a classic, just American vehicle. Couple cool things though, it's beautiful underneath. It's solid. Look at how the exhaust goes through the X frame. The transmission isn't gonna be easy to work on because it's above the frame. But this car is clean. We were just talking, there's something about like the designs of the 50s where everything's round but also sharp and just beautifully iconic to America. And it's almost like when people say like, make America great again. It's almost like the 50s, everyone was happy. Yeah. It was post-war, the boomers were having babies. Everyone was having malted milkshakes and they were going to the diners and they were wearing their poodle skirts and having dances. That's what makes the 50s cool and that's what is so cool about this car and the generation of the 50s. Look at that front end. Look at the lines and the waves. German says he found some surprises in this T-Bird. Look at that. You know what these are? Yeah. Wheel skirts. skirts. That's the original, the original radio. radio. All the original, original hubcaps. Yeah. What are those? In a tubes. Those are inner tubes for the tires? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Look at the jack. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's amazing. That's so awesome. It looks so good with those fender skirts. Sarah, you called the transmission shop. Pup, what did you say are potential failures on that? Transmission band broke or the link broke. Transmission band and the link broke? The band. Oh, okay. You called the transmission shop? Called the transmission what did they shop. say? And they said that it's typically the reverse band that breaks. Wow, he's good. Next day, gloomy, rainy day, which is perfectly reflective of my mood. 
So once again, the auction got me. I paid all the money for this car. And I swear the reverse worked yesterday when I drove it. And now there's no reverse. So for now, to be continued. We'll see y'all later. Make sure to subscribe down below so you get to see what we end up doing with this Thunderbird.